Hi, it's Holly Bray. I'm just going to teach you how to make a pumpkin pie from scratch, the actual pumpkin. A lot of people don't do that because it takes a lot of work, time, effort, but it actually ends up tasting better because you put all your love in it. Um, you can use whether the big ones for you work or you can use small ones. Small ones tend to be a little bit sweeter, so it'll give you more of a sweet tasting pie if you prefer the sugary type pie rather than the pumpkin-y pie. Um, first thing you do is you wash your hands, of course. And then you want to go ahead and wash a pumpkin. I'm just going to show you the little one even though I do have the big one cut up. Um, because you don't know who's been touching your pumpkins, they've been out in the dirt, plus everybody that comes, they want to check the pumpkins. Um, I use just a tad bit of soap, just because I'm a germ freak when it comes to people touching stuff, and I don't know who's been touching my pumpkins. Um, and I mean, it, it really is not that big of a deal, because you're going to peel off the skin, but for me it is. After you've washed the pumpkin, you want to dry it fully. If you don't dry it fully, your knife could fall off of it. You could cut yourself. You don't want that. No ER visits. And then we would proceed to just cut it in half, which I've already done that with a big pumpkin. Once you cut it in half, you want to go ahead and have a nice big spoon. I'm sure this is probably like a salad spoon, but I use it for my pumpkin scooping. And you're just going to scoop out all of the insides. You want to make sure that you get all of the, the stringy insides out because that'll make your pumpkin puree really stringy and nobody likes strings in their, their pumpkin. So you just continue to scrape and scrape until you get all the insides out, which I've already done over here on this half. Already scraped out, cleaned out. It's ready to actually be peeled. It's easier to peel it when it's in this form. You want to have it cut in half or fourths because if you try to cut it first, then it's a lot harder to get the skin off without dropping it or cutting yourself. So you're just going to proceed to just peel it like you would a potato or any other vegetable that needs the skin off. And then once you get it bare, you're going to go ahead and you're just going to cut it up. And I've already done the cutting. I've cut it into little pieces. You just chop it into slices. You can cut it in half. And then after you get your pieces like this, you're going to go ahead and take them over to a glass casserole dish. Um, you always want to put a little bit of butter in there because you don't want the pumpkin to be sticking to the bottom of the pan. and. This just makes a big mess if any baker knows already. And then you're going to place them all in there. You're just going to line them up. And then you're going to brush them with some more butter. Now, it takes about 40 minutes to an hour at 400 degrees. So make sure that you have your oven preheated. And you're going to place that into the oven. And you're just going to cook it for that um, hour time. When it's done cooking, it's going to look like this. It's going to be... Um, it's going to be a paler yellowish color and it's going to be soft and tender to the touch. Real easy to form. What you're going to do after that's cooled off a little bit, it doesn't have to be completely cooled, just a little bit just so that you can touch it if it needs to be touched, like pulled out of the pan because sometimes they do stick. Once you do that, you just throw it into the bowl here and I'll do a few more in here. You want to take all of it. Innards are very good. And you're just going to take it. I, I like to call this my musher. I'm not quite sure what it's actually used for, but it's for mushing pumpkin in my house. And so I just, just smush it down until it is completely mush. You can also use a food processor for this. Um, it'd probably take less time, less energy. Oh, that's one thing I wanted to tell you also. Pump cutting a pumpkin is hard work. So if you don't feel like you have the strength to do it, ask a child to do it, like, you know, a teenager, not like a little child, but 
or your husband or somebody that can cut it for you if you're not strong enough because it is a very, it's like cutting a watermelon times three. <laughs> it's, it's really hard to get through with the knife. So you want to have a sharp knife to do that. Um, mashing it is very easy because it's already cooked. So now this is what they would call the pumpkin puree. Now you can get this pumpkin puree recipe on online. I do not remember where mine came from. I have been doing it for years, so I have it memorized, obviously. So I'm not quite sure where it came from. I just wrote it on notebook paper. But you can definitely look it up. I am going to actually put the recipes that I use at the bottom of the video so that if you are interested in those making this at your own leisure, um, feel free to use them. Um, families love it. So anyways, we have our puree here. And I'm going to go ahead and just get a spoon here. And I need to have two cups of the puree. Now the puree is more of a moist um, form, so you want to use a liquid measuring cup because you won't get the right amount that you need if you use um, a dry measuring cup. Excuse me. Sorry about that. And then I might have to go ahead and smash up the rest of that pumpkin. Just a little bit short here. Okay. Now while your pumpkin is cooking in the oven, waiting to become puree, definitely go ahead and proceed on to your pumpkin pie recipe by getting out your ingredients, having them available, so then that way you have it ready to just measure and pour into the pie because it's real easy once you get the puree done. The puree is the hardest part. Um, it takes cinnamon, vanilla, eggs, pumpkin puree, nutmeg, allspice, ginger, buttermilk, and sugar. Um, Pretty simple ingredients, not too much of that flour where it takes so much to stir it like cookies and stuff. So it's a lot, like I said, the puree is the, the hardest part of this recipe. So we have our two cups of puree. Now I've already pre-measured my ingredients and mixed them just so that this process could go faster for everyone involved. Go ahead. This is what it's going to look like without the puree. It's more of a really dark, soupy type, soupy type recipe. Inside here is going to be all of your ingredients. And if you prefer to have like extra cinnamon or extra nutmeg, go ahead and add some of that. I wouldn't add too much ginger. Just stick with the recipe on that. And the allspice not so much either just kind of keep the normal recipe amount nutmeg is very strong so a lot of people do tend to like nutmeg but you do have to be careful when adding more because it's very strong tasting and will take over your pie now with cinnamon it asks for two tablespoons of cinnamon i always add three tablespoons just to give it that extra cinnamon taste um, once you add in your puree however it will lighten it of course because anytime you add a light color to a dark color it changes the color. And I'm just going to mix it in really well. Combine all the ingredients. I got a little pie in my bowl already. Also you can choose to make your own pie crust. I tend to cheat because it is a long process to do the from scratch from the pumpkin. So what I do is I just buy the frozen pie crust already in their little tins, which makes it nice. Um, I always get deep dish because with pumpkin pie you want to have a pretty thickness to your, your slice of pie. And then you would just pour this all into the pie crust. And you have yourself a pumpkin pie ready to be going into an oven. Now after the puree, you need to change your temperature to 350 degrees because the pie only cooks on 350 degrees. You're going to go ahead and put that in the oven. And it's going to take an hour or so to cook it. Now, 
after the hour, you want to go ahead and check it. With pumpkin pie, it will form, but sometimes it's still a little bit wiggly and you want to cook it for longer. And the way that I test how to cook it for longer is I just do five minute increments and just check it every five minutes until it's still wiggles, but is formed. Um, you don't, it's kind of like a cheesecake. You don't want it to be completely done, but you don't want it to be undone <laughs> or not finished. Um, so, when this is done cooking, I will show you guys the finished product. All right, our pie is going to be done in a minute. Um, while it's been cooking, I've been cleaning up the kitchen, and I also took all the guts off of the seeds because the seeds are a good snack for the kids. They love it. You can put brown sugar on them and bake them, or you can put some Johnny seasoning on it. Healthy treat. Um, also, with the peels from the pumpkin, when you shave it, please make sure you put them into your garbage can rather than your disposal because you'll just break your garbage disposal. Um, they are too hard to go down there. And we got 25 seconds. We're going to have a delicious pie. You also can, with your pumpkin pie, cut up some pecans and stick it on the top. Have a pecan pumpkin pie or just serve it with some whipped cream. And the last 10 seconds. So our pie is just a little bit wiggly here. Looks like we're going to need it cooked for another five minutes just because the middle is still moist. But once that is completely done, your pie is done. And also your pumpkin puree, the pumpkins are only out in October, so you need to make sure that when you do get your pumpkins, you do it in October, do the puree, you can freeze it, you can take it out in November and December and make your pies then so that they are fresh. Um, go ahead and look at our pie. It's only got about probably five minutes and it'll be completely done. And then you want to let it cool for about 10 minutes before you serve it. Cut it up and enjoy it. Bon appétit.